We're going to talk about this day in history for September 27th. I think I've got all the noisemakers turned off, so we ought to be able to get on with history. And we're going to go all the way back to begin with. We're going to go all the way back to 1389, when Cosimo de' Medici, the Italian banker, de facto ruler of Florence and patron of the arts, was born in Florence, Italy. Well, actually, Medici was born on April 10 of 1389, along with a twin brother named Damiano, who survived only a short time. The twins were named after Saints Cosmas and Damian, whose feast day was then celebrated on September 27th. Cosimo would later celebrate his own birthday on that day, his name day, rather than on the actual date of his birth. His power derived from his wealth as a banker, and he was a great patron of learning the arts and architecture. He died in 1464. In 1540, in Rome, the Society of Jesus, a Roman Catholic missionary organization, received its charter from Pope Paul III. The Jesuit order played an important role in the Counter-Reformation and eventually succeeded in converting millions around the world to Catholicism. The Jesuit movement was founded by Ignatius de Loyola, a Spanish soldier turned priest, in August of 1534. In 1601, Louis XIII, King of France, was born in the palace of Fontainebleau, Fontainebleau, France. He died in 1643. In 1722, American revolutionary, patriot, and politician, as well as the fourth governor of Massachusetts, Samuel Adams, was born on this day in Boston, Massachusetts. He is also notable for having helped organize the Boston Tea Party, and he died in 1803. On this day in 1779, the Continental Congress appointed John Adams to travel to France as Minister Plenipotentiary in charge of negotiating treaties of peace and commerce with Great Britain during the Revolutionary War, which is a long way of saying <laughs> that he was appointed to negotiate peace terms with the British. In 1791, Jews in France were granted French citizenship. In 1817, the first African-American U.S. Senator, Hiram Rhodes Revels, was born in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Quite an accomplished man, Mr. Revels was. He was a minister, a college administrator, and actually voted before the Civil War. It's a very interesting story of his life, and there is a link to more information about him in the show notes. He died in 1901. In 1864, Confederate guerrilla Bloody Bill Anderson and his henchmen, including a teenager named Jesse James, massacred 20 unarmed Union soldiers at Centralia, Missouri. The event became known as the Centralia Massacre. 1869. Nowadays, I don't think we think of Kansas as that wild of a place, but it may have been quite different about a century and a half ago, given this next item. It seems the Sheriff Wild Bill Hickok proved too wild for Kansas. <laughs> Wild Bill Hickok, Sheriff of Hayes City, Kansas, shot down Samuel Strawn, a drunken teamster who was causing trouble. Seems it was just after midnight on September 27, 1869, the Ellis County Sheriff Wild Bill Hickok and his deputy responded to a report that a local ruffian named Samuel Strawn and several of his drunken buddies were tearing up John Bitter's Beer Saloon in Hayes City, Kansas. When Hickok arrived and ordered the men to stop, Strawn turned to attack him and Hickok shot him in the head. Strawn died instantly, as did the riot. Such were Wild Bill's less-than-restrained law enforcement methods. Famous for his skill with the pistol and steely, calm manner under fire, James Butler Hickok initially seemed to be the ideal man for Sheriff of Ellis County, Kansas. The good citizens of Hayes City, the county seat, were tired of the wild brawls and destructiveness of the hard-drinking buffalo hunters and soldiers who took over their town every night. They hoped the famous Wild Bill could restore peace and order, and in the late summer of 1869, elected him as interim county sheriff. Tall, athletic, and sporting shoulder-length hair and a sweeping mustache, Hickok cut an impressive figure, and his reputation as a deadly shot with either hand 
was often all it took to keep many potential lawbreakers on the straight and narrow. As one visiting cowboy later recalled, Hickok would stand with his back to the wall looking at everything and everybody under his eyebrows just like a mad old bull. Probably something like this. <laughs> but when Hickok applied more aggressive methods of enforcing the peace, some Hayes City citizens wondered if their new cure wasn't worse than the disease. Shortly after becoming sheriff, Hickok shot a belligerent soldier who resisted arrest and the man died the next day. A few weeks later, Hickok killed Strawn. But while his brutal ways were indisputably effective, many Hayes City citizens were less than impressed that after only five weeks in office, he'd already found it necessary to kill two men in the name of preserving peace. So, during the regular November election later that year, the people expressed their displeasure at the ballot box, and Hickok lost to his deputy, 144 to 89. Though while Bill Hickok would later go on to hold other law enforcement positions in the West, his first attempt at being a sheriff had lasted only three months. 1917, the French painter Edgar Degas died on this day. 1919, American actress and wife of Steve Allen, Jane Meadows, was born in Wuchang, Hubei, China on this day in 1919. She passed away at the age of 95 in 2015. In 1920, eight Chicago White Sox players were charged with fixing the 1919 World Series. Also known as the Black Sox scandal, this had to do with the Major League Baseball match fixing incident in which eight members of the Chicago White Sox were accused of intentionally losing the 1919 World Series against the Cincinnati Reds in exchange for money from a gambling syndicate. The fallout from the scandal resulted in the appointment of Judge Kennesaw Mountain Landis. What a great name. Isn't that a great name? Kennesaw Mountain Landis. Anyway, Judge Kennesaw Mountain Landis was the first commissioner of baseball and was granted absolute control over the sport in order to restore its integrity. Despite acquittals in public trial, in 1921, Judge Landis permanently banned all eight men from professional baseball. The punishment was eventually defined to also include banishment from post-career honors, such as consideration for the Baseball Hall of Fame. Despite requests for reinstatement in the decades that followed, particularly in the case of shoeless Joe Jackson, the ban remains in force. 1937, the Bali Tiger goes extinct. Native to the Indonesian island of Bali, the Bali tiger was made extinct due to human activities and hunting. On this day in 1937, the last known adult Balinese tiger was shot. And we have several items of World War II news today. In 1938, Franklin Roosevelt appeals to Hitler for peace. On September 27, 1938, President Franklin Roosevelt wrote to German Chancellor Adolf Hitler regarding the threat of war in Europe. The German Chancellor had been threatening to invade the Sudetenland of Czechoslovakia, and in this letter, the second to Hitler in as many days, Roosevelt reiterated the need to find a peaceful resolution to the issue. As we all know now, in the end, Hitler ignored the international community's pleas for a peaceful solution and invaded Czechoslovakia in March of 1939. The invasion was just the first in Hitler's quest to control Europe and create a Third Reich of German geopolitical supremacy. 1939, Poland surrendered. On September 27, 1939, 140,000 Polish troops were taken prisoner by the German invaders as Warsaw surrendered to the superior mechanized forces of Hitler's army. The Poles fought bravely, but were able to hold on for only 26 days. 1940, the Tripartite Pact was signed. On September 27, 1940, the Axis powers were formed as Germany, Italy, and Japan became allies with the signing of the Tripartite Pact in Berlin. The pact provided for mutual assistance should any of the signatories suffer attack by any nation not already involved in the war. 
This formalizing of the alliance was aimed directly at neutral America, designed to force the United States to think twice before venturing in on the side of the Allies. The pact also recognized the two spheres of influence. Japan acknowledged the leadership of Germany and Italy in the establishment of a new order in Europe, while Japan was granted lordship over Greater East Asia. 1947, American singer-songwriter, producer, and actor Meatloaf was born on this day. In 1949, American Baseball Hall of Fame third baseman Mike Schmidt was born in Dayton, Ohio. In 1950, U.S. Army and Marine troops liberated Seoul, South Korea. In 1956, the U.S. Air Force Bell X-2, the world's fastest and high-flying plane, crashed, killing the test pilot. In 1958, American actor, TV producer, creator, and screenwriter Sean Cassidy was born in Los Angeles, California. He's known for To Do Ron Ron, The Hardy Boys, Breaking Away, and American Gothic. Sean Cassidy is the eldest son of Academy Award-winning actress Shirley Jones and Tony Award-winning actor Jack Cassidy. His older half-brother was David Cassidy. 1964, the Warren Commission, which investigated the assassination of President John F. Kennedy, issued its report, giving the conclusion that Lee Harvey Oswald acted alone. In 1965, American actress Clara Bow died on this day. Ms. Bow rose to stardom in silent film during the 1920s and successfully made the transition to talkies after 1927. Not everybody could do that, you know. Sometimes those silent film stars had great faces, very expressive in their acting ability, but really awful voices. So not everybody was able to transition to talkies. By golly, Miss Bo sure did, Clara Bo. Uh, she played a plucky shop girl in a film called It, and it brought her global fame and the nickname The It Girl. Mm -hmm. She came to personify the Roaring Twenties and is described as its leading sex symbol. 1979, the U.S. Congress approves the Department of Education as the 13th agency in the U.S. Cabinet. 1984, Canadian singer-songwriter, actress, and fashion designer Avril Lavigne was born on this day in 1984 in Belleville, Ontario. 1989, Hollywood socialite Zsa Zsa Gabor, on trial for slapping a police officer, stormed out of the courtroom in the middle of the district attorney's closing argument. The prosecutor told the jury that Gabor craves media attention and had abused two weeks of this process for her own self-aggrandizement. Although her attorney objected when the prosecutor said the defendant doesn't know the meaning of truth, Gabor was already running out in tears. Zsa, Zsa Gabor was born February 6, 1917, and she was a Hungarian-American actress and socialite. Her sisters were actresses Eva and Magda Gabor. Zsa, Zsa was married nine times. She was divorced seven times, and one marriage was annulled. Gabor was accused of slapping Officer Paul Kramer during a traffic stop. She had been pulled over for expired tags on her Rolls Royce, and as the officer checked for other violations, including having an open container of alcohol in the vehicle and an expired license, Gabor drove off. When the officer chased her down and pulled her over again, she slapped him, although she said that she was acting in self-defense and that he was using excessive force in arresting her. I guess she'd never seen an episode of Cops. Anyway, she strenuously objected to and may have exaggerated how badly she felt she'd been treated by the police. During the trial, Gabor violated a court-imposed gag order by calling one of the prosecution witnesses a little punk with a hairdo like a girl. In a bizarre attempt to make amends with the witness, she told him that she spoke Turkish, to which the young man replied, So, I'm from Iran. Gabor replied, Well, that's close. Later that day, Gabor was convicted and sentenced to 72 hours in jail, 120 hours of community service, and $13,000 in fines and restitution. She died in 2016. 1991. On September 27, 1991, a movie called My Own Private Idaho, an independent film written and directed by Gus Van Sant and starring Keanu Reeves and River Phoenix, premiered 
at the New York Film Festival. The movie told the story of two young male hustlers, one of whom was a hapless narcoleptic searching for the mother who had abandoned him, and the other of whom came from a wealthy family. The character was inspired in part by Shakespeare's Prince Hal in Henry IV. The pair met in Portland, Oregon, and later traveled to Idaho and Italy. My Own Private Idaho, the title reportedly came from a song by the rock band the B-52s, was nominated for six Independent Spirit Awards and won Best Screenplay, Best Male Lead, and Best Film Music. 1996, the Taliban takes over Kabul. Following the takeover, the Islamic Fundamentalist Group established the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan. In 2003, the European Space Agency launched the Smart One satellite to orbit the moon. In 2007, NASA launched the Dawn Probe to explore and study the two largest objects of the asteroid belt, Vesta and Ceres. In 2008, Zhai Zhigang became the first Chinese to walk in space. He was part of the Shenzhou 7 crew. And that's going to wrap it up for us today. Thank you so much for watching. Give it a like if you enjoyed this video. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And feel free to share it if you found it interesting. And remember, links to all my research are in the show notes. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Come on now, you can do it. You can do it. I know you can do it. Good girl. Good girl. Okay. Nine times. Jaja was married nine times. That's not how we said it. Don't make me squeak that pig again. <laughs>